Ooh. Hey, y'all. How's it going? Give me one second while I um get everything all together. Um, Maxwell, I need you to tone it down just a bit. How y'all doing on today? Um, while I get ready, I want to say hello to my family, my parents, my sister, my cousins, all my loved ones who give you a girl a gander. And even y'all who don't know me from a can of paint, especially y'all, you know, hey, is that Trista? Um, hold on. All right, so we're all shut up there. Let's go to our live. QT is going into NFTs. Okay. Um, oh, while we're doing our intro, y'all. All right, Peter Young Dolph. I cannot believe that. Um, yeah, that's sad and tragic. All right, so we are getting started shortly. We're all shared out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So I'm just waiting for y'all to pop in, hang out with your girl. I know, I'm being silly. Don't mind me. I'm way, my eye. Mm. Pardon me, guys. Mm. Oh, you know what? I need to get me some water. Wool down, wool down, wool down. Ah, my eye. My eye. My eye. Okay. Ah. Okay, I'm back. Brandon, hey, what's going on? Hello to my friends on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, everywhere where you're joining me from. We are getting started in just a couple of minutes. Um, Brandon, did you miss our NFT story yesterday? NFTs are popping up everywhere, man. We, our main story tonight has to do with NFTs. Um, and since you're in the crypto space, I'm sure you're like super interested in that. Ow, my freaking eye. Crap doodles. Okay. Okay. So we are getting started shortly. Uh, oh, you came on as I signed off? Okay. Ow, crap. Well, yesterday, our NFT story had to do with this investment firm, Republic Records. Well, Republic Investments, they're trying to help people invest in musical NFTs, but you have Republic Records, which manages Taylor Swift and Drake. And they're all in a kerfuffle. But yeah, that's the 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 it in a nutshell. But uh, we're getting started shortly, and we're gonna you know go through everything. So grab a drink, a snack, or some something right with whatever makes you feel comfortable. While I figure out what is wrong with my eye. Ooh. Some of my eye. No. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> all right, 8.05, let's get started. I'm going to hit record. 
All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice and you're like, Who's this lady? Uh, I'm Natalie Pierre Lewis. I'm the host of the show, and I'm the owner and operator of MPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. So things like making sure you have your articles of incorporation with the state, getting your EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, trademarks, contract templates, hiring and training strategies, all this and much more. These are things that I can help you with. If you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you do these things, <coughs> excuse me. I'm very happy you asked. Uh, I am a licensed attorney, have been one for 15 years and counting. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful, there are just some things that you need to know. No way around it. So that is why moi, me, myself, I am here to help you along that path to make your businesses legitimate so that you can do things like establish business credit, uh, so that you can get business loans, so you can become a federal contractor, so you can get your products into big box stores. These are just some of the things that you can do when your business is legitimate. Okay. Um, so that is why I'm here to help you get to that bag. So if you're in the startup phase of your business, or if you're just trying to get legit so you can do all of those things that I just mentioned, hit me up. I do provide free 15 minute consultations for first time clients, but a link tree forward slash MPL consulting firm. That is the only link in my bio on Instagram and it's all over my page on Facebook. Link tree forward slash MPL consulting firm is where you can, uh, again, um, sign up for a free 15 minute consultation. If you're a first time client, if you're not a first time client, you can sign up for a one hour, um, strategy session or uh, a talk to me Tuesday session where you get 25 minutes for $25. Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm is also where you can download my free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm is where you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast. So if you ever miss a live um, broadcast, like one of these shows, you can catch up at your leisure, right? Um, and last but not least, um, Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm is where you can get my digital products, like my eBooks and, and my video trainings. So this month we're talking um, about securing your business, uh, mostly through, uh, we're talking about store policies, right? right? Especially my crafters out here, my people who make custom made items. Um, it's holiday season. People are going to be hitting you up for orders and you don't want to, you know, be 75% of the way through an order and a customer is like, well, I want to cancel. And you've already, you know, put in your blood, sweat and tears. So have your store policies already in place so that you and your customers don't have any issues later on. Okay. You can pick that up at link forward slash NPL consulting firm. And for those of you who are dedicated fans of the show. If you want to, you know, support the show and show everybody why you're so smart, you want to pick up a mug. Um, we also have t-shirts. All of those are available at link forward slash NPL consulting firm. Okay. All right. So we've gone through the business housekeeping. Let's get to the show and why we are here. For those of you who may be watching for the first time, or maybe you've forgotten what the show is like, here is how it works. Uh, I pull stories from the news, stories from blog sites, stories that you lovely people send me anywhere that I find inspiration. Um, and I pull the ones that have lessons that we can learn as entrepreneurs and we discuss them. Okay. So this is a time for you to get involved. Please don't be shy. Ask your questions, give your comments. As long as they're respectful, they are welcome here. I will be asking you to give me some emojis, to give me your opinions in the boxes. Um, and you know, if you have expertise in some things, I may ask you to come on here, you know, give us a little quick lesson. All right. So um, stay tuned. It's a lot more fun when we're all talking to each other. So don't feel like you have to stay quiet. Fill in those boxes. I love when you guys give me comments. Okay. All right. So now we can get a started. All right. Um, okay. First story of the evening. If you are a baseball fan, give me a baseball emoji. If you're a baseball fan, give me a baseball emoji. Uh, and if you are a roller derby fan, give me a skating emoji. 
If you like the game of baseball, give me a baseball emoji. If you like roller derby, the uh, game of roller derby, give me a skate emoji. Um, I had a, an old roommate who did roller derby. It's, it looks really cool, but it also looks very violent. Um, I don't have, I, I, I am not balanced. I can barely stand my own two feet. I never learned how to skate. Um, so when I see those women, you know, uh, cause I think it's mostly women who play roller derby. When I see them on those skates going past each other, I am amazed, right? Hey, Margaret. Okay. Uh, Brandon, you gave me a baseball. What, who, what baseball team do you root for? Who is your team? Okay. Um, tonight we have, uh, well, Hey Cheryl. Oh, okay. You like roller derby. Okay, Cheryl. I like it. Okay. So, um, while Brandon is telling us who his favorite baseball team is, um, I'm going to tell you why I'm asking these questions. So there is a baseball team in Cleveland. They were formerly known as the Cleveland Indians. But um, because of, you know, Cleveland and Washington. Oh, shoot. We're going to talk about Cleveland right now. So the Cleveland baseball team was formerly called the Cleveland Indians, but because of, you know, people being more aware of how racist, uh, the name, the Cleveland Indians were the team, uh, the team has, um, been trying to figure out what they were going to change. They were just trying to figure it out. So it's taken them months and months and months. Um, not gladiators, the Cleveland Indians, they decided to change their name to the Cleveland Guardians, okay? Cleveland Guardians. Cool name, right? Here's the problem. There is already a roller derby team in Cleveland that is called the Cleveland Guardians. Um, and the Cleveland Guardians, when they found out that the baseball team was also trying to call themselves the Guardians, they filed for trademark infringement because they did have a trademark for the name um, <laughs> for the name guardians first, they secured it. Right. So they've been going back and forth, uh, figuring out who was going to be able to use this name guardians. Well, there has been a resolution. Um, and I want to know what your opinion about this. So the baseball team, the, uh, cl the former Cleveland Indians and the roller derby team, the Cleveland guardians, they have decided that they will both be calling themselves the Cleveland Guardians. So neither team is giving up the name. They're just going to have to be very judicious about, about not stepping on each other's toes, right? So you're going to have Cleveland Guardians for baseball, and you're going to have Cleveland Guardians for roller derby. Now, do you think that there is a possibility of confusion between these two teams? Now, um, I don't know. I don't know too many baseball fans who are roller derby fans, and vice versa. So maybe there won't be, right? But it's. It, I think that there is a slight possibility of confusion when you have two sports teams in the same town that have the same name. So, what do you think about this conclusion between these two teams that are now both calling themselves? Cleveland Guardians. Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think both the, the baseball team and the roller derby team being called the Guardians, is that a good idea or should the um, baseball team have changed its name? What do you think? And, and when I was, re um, Brandon said, yes, there's, there's confusion. There's probably a probability of confusion, especially since they're in the same city. I totally agree. You know what I think happened again? Um, Cle the, well, the Cleveland guardians. Now the former Cleveland Indians, the baseball team, baseball has deep pockets. So I feel like they slid the roller derby team over a nice little check check and said, look, just, Oh shoot. My, my Mac, uh, hold on. I got to plug in my, my computer before I shut off. Um, I feel like they slid the roller derby team a check and they said, look, just let us use this name for baseball purposes. You can keep it, do your little roller derby thing, but 
you know, let us have it for baseball. Margaret said, yes, if they don't say which sports team they're talking about. Okay. So Margaret, you bring up a good point. It's, it's, if they don't say which sports team they're talking about, there's a likelihood of confusion, but in all your years of watching television, right. And you may stumble upon a sports segment. Can you tell me how many times you have stumbled upon a sports segment that is covering roller derby? I have been, I have fallen into baseball sports updates against my will, <laughs> you know, basketball updates, football updates, sometimes even soccer. I don't think there's ever been a single time that I've ever heard someone talking about roller derby in a space where I couldn't get away from it, right? Um, Brandon asked if the colors are the same. I don't know. I, um, the articles that I read did not give me logos. I'm sure that the logos are probably very different and that will help to distinguish between the two teams. But, um, right. You don't remember any Margaret, but, um, <laughs> but the, uh, Toby, but even without the logos, when you need, you know, when you're hearing the name Cleveland guardians, People might be like, who are you talking about, right? Brandon said, I've never been to a roller derby before. Me neither. Me neither. So I think that because, um, again, the, the, Cle the original Cleveland Guardians, the roller derby team, they had the name first, so and they secured it. So that was very smart of them, right? Because they're not as popular a team. It would have been very easy for the baseball team to basically steamroll them because they have a lot more money. But they went through the trouble of getting that trademark. So now I, I feel like they got a nice check and, you know, they're just going to let the baseball team use the Guardians name for baseball. OK. And again, the power of trademarks. I guarantee you some type of money changed hands in that deal. All right. OK. Moving on to our next story of the evening. Brandon, I want you to perk up your ears. OK. All right. Okay, um, if you have ever seen the movie Pulp Fiction, if you have ever seen the movie Pulp Fiction, um, give me a movie reel emoji. Brandon asked, did the baseball team use tests? Ask their legal department, Brandon. I don't know how they got, how they, um, how they missed this. Somebody need to see what was going on in the legal department. But moving on to our next story, if you have ever seen Pulp Fiction, give me a movie reel, like a movie type emoji. Okay. Um, thank you, Brandon. Pulp Fiction, if you um, if you didn't know, it was uh, one of Quentin. It wasn't one of. It was Quentin Tarantino's breakout film as a director. It put him on the map. Um, it starred John Travolta, Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman, um, and a host of other people. Um, and it was, it was a very interesting story, right? Um, and it's, and it's a classic. It is a classic movie. There are memes about it all over the place, things like that. Thank you, Cheryl, for the movie real emoji. Okay. Um, the, the the line I remember most from that movie is when Samuel L. Jackson is going off about the McDonald's. He's like, you know, they don't call this a uh, uh, a quarter pounder in in France. They call it a royale with cheese. <laughs> um. Anyway, yes, I I probably delivered that awfully, but you know that's my favorite line. Anyway. So the movie Pulp Fiction, while it was directed by Quentin Tarantino, it was financed and distributed by Miramax Films. You know how when you're watching a movie and they have the credits rolling in the front and you can see the production companies behind them? Well, Miramax was the one that put up all the money and put the, and put the film um, in theaters, right? And in exchange for financing Pulp Fiction and getting it out there, they um, retained... Um, many of the rights um, for the movie, um, except for ones that are director specific. When you direct a movie, you can keep um, copyrights for the soundtrack, a spin-off movie, a sequel, or print publications, right? 
So Mirror Max had all of the copyrights that go along with the movie, except for the ones that are particular to the directors. Hello, Slabadabadoo11, right? Now, as we know, NFTs are, become, are like the new hot commodity, right? Um, I gave you guys a very bare bones description of what NFTs are. NFTs, NFT stands for non-fungible token. It's basically kind of like a, a digital certificate of authenticity saying that you have the official copy to something. It might be a piece of art, a piece of music, whatever, right? So Quentin Tarantino, he's getting into NFTs and he planned on um, selling scanned digital copies of the script of the pulp fiction script for uncut versions of scenes so he was saying look if you are a pulp fiction fan and you want to see the script for the scenes that we didn't put in the movie i'm going to make it into an nft so you can have a whole page of the script for yourself and it's going to be an official copy all right so Quentin Tarantino, he's putting this up. He's going to make himself some money. Um, and it, it wasn't just the script. It was also going to be with audio commentary and other elements. And then Mirror Max, they came up and they said, whoa, 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 uh, Quentin. We retain the rights for, for the majority of Pulp Fiction. So what do you think you're doing? Now, remember, I told you guys that Miramar, they kept the copyrights for the movie, except the ones that are particular to a director, which are for the soundtrack, a spinoff, a sequel, and for print publishing. So Miramax is opposing Quentin Tarantino's NFT attempts. And Quentin Tarantino is saying, look, because of my director's right for print publishing, this is, I have every right to do this. This comes within the realm of the rights that I have. Why am I bringing this story to you? Because this hasn't been resolved. They're basically going to have to, you know, parse through and see whether Quentin Tarantino can do this. Copyrights are not flat. There are many different types of copyrights, especially when you are in the entertainment industry or the, um, the visual arts, because you can have recording um, copyrights, you can have print copyrights, you can have licensing copyrights. There are so many different types of copyrights. So it is up to you to make sure that your rights are properly delineated so you know exactly what you have the right to and what you don't have the right to. So now Quentin Tarantino and Miramax, they're going to have to go to court and figure out who has the right to sell digital copies of the uncut scenes of Pulp Fiction, right? So I want to know from you guys, based on what you've heard, who do you think has more of a right to sell these, um, these script pages from uncut scenes of Pulp Fiction? Miramax, the company that financed and distributed the film, or Quentin Tarantino, who directed the movie and probably you know, said, let's keep this, let's cut that, let's do this. Who do you think has more of a right to start selling these, um, these, these scanned digital pages of the uncut scenes? Um, <clears throat> Brandon is saying that Quentin Tarantino has the right since it's print, but does the scanned copy count as a print publication, right? There's, I feel like there's going to be an argument over that. Um, and anybody else, any, any other ideas? Does anybody agree with Brandon? I like, I'm, I'm on the same lines as you and I can see Quentin Tarantino's argument, but I feel like the technology piece is really going to throw a wrench in that. Um, uh, Margaret is on Miramax's side. Okay. Um, Cheryl is on Quentin Tarantino's side. Like I, I'm truly confused here as, as to who is going to have the right NFTs are really causing a big, um, you know, discussion it within the, the intellectual property world. Um, 
the IMF Brennan said a PDF is still the printed version. Right. It's a copy. But what Quentin Tarantino, he's selling you a, an NFT. So this is going to be only one. You're the only person that's going to have access to this page. And you're going to have that certificate of authenticity. Okay. So that's the difference between a PDF document that you can download from anywhere and these NFTs, at least from my understanding of it. Okay. Maybe somebody else understands it better than I do. Um, but yeah, I'm very interested to see how the court is going to decide this, how they're going to decide who has the rights to do what, especially in this burgeoning industry of NFTs. Um, so I will definitely keep you guys posted on that. Oh my God. I feel like I spent like forever on that story. Um, but it's okay. All right. Um, okay. So before we move on to our next stories, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you are in the startup phase of your business or you're trying to get your business legitimate so you can do things like build business credit, get business loans, become a federal contractor, get your products into big box stores. I want to help you set up that foundation. Um, link up with me, go to linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm and book yourself a free 15 minute consultation today. Linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm is also where you can download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. All right. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Um, if you have heard of David Bowie, if you have heard of a gentleman by the name of David Bowie, please give me, if there's an emoji that has uh, an emoji person that has red hair, give me a red haired emoji person, either that, or give me some type of music emoji. Um, if you didn't know, David Bowie is, uh, as you may have guessed, he, or was a musician. He was also the husband of supermodel Iman. Um, they were married for a long time, like, I want to say like 40 years. I don't know. They were married forever. Um, and he died a few years ago of cancer, I believe. Um, uh, he starred in Penn's Labyrinth. Um, David Bowie was a real rock star. Um, uh, but yeah, if you've heard of David Bowie, either give me some type of music emoji or a red haired emoji. Anyway, even if you haven't heard of David Bowie, I'm sure you've heard of Amon. Um, but anyway, like I said, David Bowie, he was a musician and he passed away uh, a few years ago uh, due to cancer. Uh, and there has been a um, an effort for, people want his music catalog, okay? There is a lot of money to be made in purchasing uh, the catalogs of artists. And David Bowie is no exception. Um, Warner Music, you've heard of him, Margaret? Awesome. Warner Music, they are in the running to uh, purchase David Bowie's catalog. Now, um, again, the, David Bowie's estate, they, they have gotten offers for his catalogs for his catalog already. They've been around the 200 million mark, but Warner music is willing to put up, uh, about $535 million for the rights to David Bowie's recording catalog. That is incredible. Now I couldn't tell you a single David Bowie song, but I know $535 million is going to have his family eating for a very long time. And this is why it is important that you maintain your rights in your work, right? Recording artists, you you see all of these recording artists now who are, um, who had, whose masters belonged to, to labels and things like that. They're going and they're re-recording their, um, their album so that they can get that, the, um, that revenue back because, all that money is going to the record labels. Um, having the rights to your music, owning your masters, owning your recording rights, owning uh, you know your performance rights, those are things that bring in a lot of revenue. And those are rights that the record companies used to take in exchange for providing you advances and funding your videos and things like that. But now we realize that the, um, you know, you don't necessarily need the record companies for that. So a lot of artists are fighting to get back their masters or they're re-recording 
so they can get that money. So David Bowie's catalog is is no exception to the um um you know to to um value and Warner Music is willing to put up you know um, over half a billion dollars to um to, to be able to acquire it. So just, you know, a friendly reminder, intellectual property can be very lucrative. Okay. That's where the money is. All right. And our last story of the evening, if you have ever owned a pair of Skechers, if you've ever owned a pair of Skechers, give me a sneaker emoji. If you've ever owned a pair of Skechers, give me a sneaker emoji. Um, and if you have heard of Easy Spirit Shoes, give me an E, okay? So, hey, AJ, AP Jackson, if you have ever owned a pair of Skechers, give me a sneaker emoji. Thank you, AP Jackson. And if you have heard of Easy Spirit Shoes, Give me an E. Okay. Thank you, AP Jackson. Um, so <clears throat> recently there was a little bit of a tiff between Skechers and Easy Spirit. Um, thank you, Cheryl. If you didn't know, um <laughs> Brandon, why you give me a thumbs down? What's wrong with Skechers and Easy Spirit? They are very comfortable shoes. <laughs> um Yes. But uh, if you didn't know, Easy Spirit has a line of shoes that they call travel time. They are shoes, they're like slip on, um, slip on sneakers that are good for, you know, when you're going to and from work. And they got a trademark for this line of shoes that they called travel time. Okay. Travel time shoes. Like I used to do that sometimes, you know, I would wear comfortable shoes when I was going to work and then I would go to work and, you know, change it to my, my nice shoes. Um, I don't do that no more cause I don't leave the house. Uh, but yeah, but they had what they called travel time shoes, which were slip on sneakers that were, you know, comfort, comfy for, for walking around. Okay. Travel time, right? Move going over to the Skechers side. Skechers has their own line of comfy slip-on shoes for, you know, walking around. Um, and they called their line of shoes commute time, C-O-M-M-U-T-E, commute time. We know the word commute, my morning commute, when you're going to work, things like that, right? Both of them slip-on sneakers. Um, so Easy Spirit, they got a little bit, they were feeling their beat and they sued Skechers for trademark infringement. They said that there was a likelihood of confusion between their travel time mark and Skechers commute time mark. Okay. Now I told you they, they're both lines of slip on slip, slip on sneakers, right? One is called travel time. One is called commute time. Do you think that there is a likelihood of confusion between travel time and commute time as it relates to the lines of shoes. <clears throat> Let me know what you think. And then I'm going to tell you what the judge said. Do you think that there is a possibility of confusion between travel time shoes and commute time shoes? While you guys give me your answers, I'm going to let you know what the judge said. The judge said, easy spirit, calm yourself down. Um, apparently, uh, not necessarily, Brandon. The judge, the um, Skechers actually did surveys with uh, with blind groups to see if there were if there would be confusion between the commute time shoes and the travel time shoes. And there was 0% of the population that felt that, um, that found it confusing. So the judge, they sided with Skechers and Skechers gets to keep their commute time trademark. Okay. Now, while they may have similar concepts, I'm not going to confuse the word commute with the word travel because they don't sound the same. They might mean the same, but they don't sound the same. Right. 
So um, the judge felt the same way, especially with the proof of the uh, survey that there was zero con percent confusion. So Skechers is going to get to keep on selling their commute time shoes and Easy Spirit will keep their travel time shoes. OK, so. Yeah, I don't blame Easy Spirit. They were probably just zealously defending their mark. But, you know, the shoes look different. We don't, Easy Spirit has a particular style. So does Skechers. And the names are different enough that you're not necessarily, that you're not going to mix the two, right? All right. So, um, so those were the stories that I wanted to share with you today. My throat is dry, y'all. Um, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. Um, AP Jackson, thanks for dropping in. I ain't seen you in a month of Sundays, girl. Um, this will be our last show of the week. I will be back on Monday. Um, I will be broadcasting from Boston because I'm going home for the holidays. Haven't been home in like for like two Thanksgivings. Um, but yeah, if you are um, a crafter and you're watching me, make sure that you pick up uh, policies every craft shop owner needs. Go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. It is the first uh, button in the row of buttons. Uh, make sure that you are booking your one on one sessions with me. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop taking sessions like the week before Christmas. Uh, what else? If you find any stories that you would like me to talk about, send them to my inbox. You know, I love when you send me stories. Uh, yeah. So that was, that was what I have for you. If you guys have any questions for me, now is the time to get them in. I'm going to give y'all like maybe 45 seconds to get your questions in. Um, you can ask about the stories we covered. We talked about uh, the Cleveland Indians, now the Cleveland Guardians. We talked about Quentin Tarantino and Pulp Fiction. We talked about Warner Music purchasing David Bowie's catalog. And we talked about Skechers versus Easy Spirit. But you can ask me about business formation. Um, so now's your time to shine. <laughs> okay. Um, and if we don't have any more stories, we can end here. Um, you know, my DMs are always open if there's anything that you want to ask me within reason. Um, so have a wonderful rest of your week. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, take care of yourselves, wear your masks, wash your hands, and I'll see you next time. Bye.